Hi, and welcome to this webinar. I'm Adam, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to the European Union Chemicals Legislation Finder, EUCLIF. EUCLIF brings together information about different pieces of EU chemicals legislation into one place seamlessly integrated with our chemicals database. It is funded by the European Union's COSME program and powered by us here at ECHA. Now today, you'll get a sneak preview of the tool a few days ahead of its launch on the 11th of March, 2020. So what can you expect from today? First, we'll present the main features of EUCLIF, followed by the many benefits it can bring to your business. Then I'll give you a short demo of the finder. We will have a Q&A session throughout the webinar and you can send questions to our experts. So let's start with a few practical details. On the bottom right hand side of your screen, there is a Q&A panel that you can maximize by clicking on the black arrow. This pops up the Q&A chat. You can use it to send your questions throughout the webinar and you can also use it in case you have technical difficulties with the webinar tool. When sending your question, make sure you select all panelists from the drop-down menu. So, as mentioned before, you can send your questions at any time during the webinar. Now, we can only answer questions related to the scope of today's webinar. This means the functionalities and features of Euclid and not individual legislations and how they impact you or your business. If your question is not answered by the end of the webinar, don't worry, we will publish a Q&A document with all the Q&As at the end of the webinar. Remember that you can also save a transcript of the Q&A before logging off by selecting the file menu on the top left of your WebEx window. So with that, I pass the floor to my colleague Theodora, who will talk to you about what Euclid is and how it can help you. Theodora, the floor is yours. Thanks, Adam. Hello, my name is Theodora, and I would like to introduce you today to what is Euclid and how it can help you. So, UCLEF is the European Union Chemicals Legislation Finder. It is a search engine for regulatory information on chemicals, enabling companies, and especially SMEs, to find out how their substances are being regulated in the EU and what legal obligations they have. As my colleague Adam said, it is funded by COSME and powered by us, ATECA. When you navigate the EU legislative framework, whether you are manufacturing, using, or distributing chemicals, means you have to comply with EU law or several pieces of EU law. It is a complex information, it might take your time, and it might be costly. This is why we made UCLEF, to help you identify the pieces of legislation that apply to your substance. Making the legislative information easier to find means that you will have access to the laws managed by the European Chemicals Agency, like REACH, COP, BPR, and others, but also to much more, 35 pieces of legislation on several different areas, cosmetic products, pesticides, waste, toy safety, food and safety and food contact materials, and much more. So, how UCLEF works? UCLEF is seamlessly integrated into ECA's chemical database. You can search by substance names, you can search by CAS or EC numbers. You also have access to our popular info card with substance info where you can find much more information on classification and labeling, import, uses, or manufacture. UCLEF provides you also with relevant information on the substance that comes into several categories as displayed. If you have a problem or you have a question, we are proud to um, provide you with regulatory support that will be available 24 by 7 on our website. Don't miss to check it out on the 11th of March when we go live. The help desk will also provide you with technical support. It will answer any questions in relation to UCLEF 
It will provide clarity on the pieces of legislation in the scope, so-called regulatory advice, and it will help you navigate through your obligations. So, how this happened, Euclid? The journey was a continuous development of several years, and we hope to be continuously adding legislations in the ones to come. As you can see, we started back in 2015, when our stakeholder expressed interest. 2017 identified ECA as the home of UCLEF. March 2020 is a critical moment. We shall go live, and we will make available the tool for you. And Q1 2021 will see the enrichment of the service with more pieces of EU legislation. So please use the tool, give us feedback, promote it so that we can enrich it even further for your help. What is inside UCLEF? Well, we have uh, legislations covered and not managed by ECA. It will provide you information on the scope of the legislation, the exemptions, the regulatory activities, the obligations, and much more, such as substance lists. The scope that you will see between 2020 and 2021 includes 55 legislations in areas so important as health and safety at work, environmental related legislation, exposure to chemicals agents, food and safety and food contact material legislation, not to mention chemical legislations and product control legislations. But 2020 is the go live of our first version of UCLEF. And this is what you will be able to access in a few days. UCLEF is seamlessly integrated into ECAS Chemicals Database. It means that with one search, you can find a lot of information about your substance. And we are growing. We will expand from 8 to 42 legislations, and we would have at least 12,000 new substances, more than 19,000 unique UPAC names, other unique names, and unique molecular formulas. So don't miss it out. Why use UCLEF? You would ask me. We try to make it easy to navigate for you. It is free of charge and it is comprehensive. It provides an overview of the relevant legislation at hand in one window and also information about your substance and it comes with dedicated help desk support. 24 by 7, online, any time of the day and night. And it gives clarity, regulatory clarity on your business. Thank you. And now my colleague Adam will continue with the demo of the solution. Don't miss it. Euclid is an online service that enables you to find comprehensive information about the different obligations that apply to your substance in accordance with some of the EU regulations and directives concerning chemicals. It is funded by the European Commission's COSME program and powered by us here at ECHA. Euclid data has been integrated with our chemicals database that also includes publicly available information from the pieces of legislation managed by us, such as the REACH and Biocidal Products Regulations. Note that UCLIF only includes legislation that has already been adopted. For more information about EU law, the EURLEX website includes all the EU treaties, directives, regulations, decisions, and consolidated pieces of legislation. Now let's take a closer look at UCLIF. There are two ways you can access UCLIF data either directly on our home page by searching for a substance in our chemicals database or through the Euclid landing page. Let's start with the Euclid landing page. On our home page, under each item in the legislation menu, you will find a Euclid link. As you can see, 
there is also a substance search here. I will show you how you can do a substance specific search later on in the video. Here, you can also find a list of all the currently available legislation included in Euclid, grouped under nine different categories, such as chemical control, exposure to chemical agents, and food safety. When you expand each category, you are presented with the different legislation profiles together with a brief description of what they cover. Let's click on one. A legislation profile opens where you can find a sidebar on the left. It helps you navigate through a variety of information such as the scope and related exemptions. It also has links to a legislation summary and full legal texts on the Eurolex website. The sidebar on the right includes specific substance lists relevant to this legislation. Under C also, you can find other relevant legislation profiles that belong to the same category. Now let's click on a substance list. Here is a table of substances associated with this particular legislation. There are several actions you can take. By clicking on the arrows under each column, you can filter the list by alphabetical order or from high to low values and vice versa. This eye icon indicates that there are more details to see for the list entry. A useful way to filter is by expanding the filter the list heading. Here, you can type in the name, EC, or CAS number in the substance identifier search box. Then press filter. You can also export your search results into various formats such as Excel, CSV, or XML. If the list has more than 50 substances, you can jump to next and last substance entries in the table. Now you can either go back to the legislation profile or continue browsing by clicking on the substance name to learn more about the substance and view its info card. To help you understand what the different column headings and icons mean, simply hover your mouse over the bold text to get a short description. Now let's click on a substance. This takes you to a substance info card, one of the most used features on our website. Some of you are already familiar with them, but now they have been enriched with Euclid data and new functionalities. One of them is a tab called Regulatory Context that directs you to the piece of legislation under Euclid. So let's click on Other Chemical Legislation. Here, you can browse through all the legislation that regulate the substance you searched for. A yellow or red icon on the right means that there is a restriction on the use or a ban of the substance under the related legislation. This Obligations or OBL icon gives you access to the Substances Regulatory Obligations page. You can also access it through the Regulatory Obligations box under Key Data Sets. The Substance Regulatory Obligations page contains a combination of the descriptions of the obligations associated with a substance that is included in a legislation list. Remember to make use of the tooltips that give additional information related to the obligations for your substance. You can access Euclid data also through our advanced search. This takes you to an expandable panel where you can search using different criteria. The regulatory context block has been extended with all the pieces of legislation covered by Euclid and displays all the categories I showed you earlier. Before we end the video, there is another way to access Euclid via the Information on Chemicals section. If you have created an ECHA account, by signing in, you can access additional features such as saving your favorite search criteria and storing a list of favorite substances. So, let's quickly recap what Euclid can do for you. You can search by substance to find its characteristics, 
and the pieces of legislation that regulate it, together with the obligations they entail. If you have a question about your substance or obligations, UCLIF has a dedicated regulatory help desk that is there to help you. You can access it through our contact forms. The easiest way is through our front page. By clicking on Contact, you will be redirected to a list of web forms. Just select UCLIF. This pops up the UCLIF contact form. By selecting the drop down menu, you can choose the request type. The first one, Chemical Information Published on ECHA's website, refers to any clarification on the content published on the UCLIF pages. By selecting the option, new fields appear. Information that is mandatory for you to fill in is marked with a red star. So in this case, for example, I would need to specify which page this particular question concerns. You can also choose a category based on the nine categories that we have on the UCLIF landing page and go as deep as a specific legislation. You can also optionally provide some additional data like EC list numbers, cast numbers, substance names, and last but not least, as a minimum, the web address which you can copy from your address bar in your browser so that we can assist you in the proper page. Then you have an open field to type your question. There is also an option to add an attachment. In order to submit, you need to fill in your contact details and confirm with the CAPTCHA before submitting it to us. Next is regulatory advice. Here, you can ask a question about the content of UCLEF legislation and or related regulatory obligations. Here again, the fields change slightly, but you at least have to specify a legislation that you have a question about. Then you provide your question in the text box, add an attachment, fill in your contact details as before, and submit it to us. The last option, technical support, allows you to send us questions about specific issues in browsing the UCLIF web pages. Slightly different fields here, you just provide your question, you can add up to three attachments, fill in your contact details, and submit your information to us here at ECHO. Remember that you can also use the CA problem or have feedback buttons while navigating through UCLIF to submit your question. This brings us to the end of our tutorial. I hope you have learned more about the many possibilities available to you when using UCLIF. Thank you and goodbye. So, that brings us to the end of the webinar. I hope you found it useful. Here are a few take-home messages before we close. UCLIF is coming on the 11th of March. It is a tool that is intended to make your life easier when navigating the EU legislative framework for chemicals. Start using it and help us promote it to make sure it is as widely used as possible. Make use of the regulatory support service presented in one of the presentations earlier to ask questions about any details you need about the different pieces of legislation. And it is a tool to meet your needs, so make sure you give your feedback to us to help us improve it in the future. As with all our webinars, all the material will be published, and by the time this webinar closes, you will be able to see the presentations and watch a recording of the event on the webinar page. Also, the webinar will now remain open until one Helsinki time to answer your questions. Again, if your question is not answered by the end of the webinar, don't worry, we will publish a Q&A document with all the questions and answers shortly after the event. Remember also that before logging off, use the File button on the top left of your WebEx window to save a transcript of all the Q&As of this webinar. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention, hope you found the event useful, and see you again soon in one of our upcoming events.